I have a message. Hello, Victoria. <clears throat> this is Todd. I heard about the fifth murder. I expect a full report on my desk tomorrow morning. Yes, you would. Wouldn't you? Why did you take so long getting here? You're the only one with a 4x4. Christ, I don't even want to go there. I mean, what is it with these idiots who buy 20 lottery tickets anyway? I mean, do they really have to waste everyone's time? God, they piss me off. I just wanted a pack of gum, too. Hey, last time I saw you, you were limping to your car. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just my ego. It got hurt more than me, I think. So what are you up to? I started the report. I figured you were too pooped to do it. You know, Miller, you do have your moments. Anything I can do to help with the report? Actually, yes. I need Claire's preliminary report to help me out. I'm not going down there. She might lock me up in one of the drawers and leave me there. Also, I need the pictures you took, so could you please drop the camera in the evidence chute in the hallway? Oh, I almost forgot. Is everything okay with your girlfriend? Oh yeah, forget about it. She knows now it's a big misunderstanding. But just don't answer my cell phone again, please. I promise. Well, okay, see you later. Agent McPherson. Officer Tate? Agent Ashby wants to see you. She's waiting for you at the morgue. All right. So, how did you guys get the body down? Me and some of the forensic guys set up a ladder where the stairs fell. Oh, well, I hope no one got hurt. Nope, I know what y'all mean, though. That place was as stable as lemmings near a cliff. Hey Claire, get that preliminary lab work done? As a matter of fact, I'm not quite finished. However, I have enough to brief you on if you have the time. For you, always. Okay, here goes. The victim's blood revealed high levels of alcohol. Also, I found traces of rohypnol, which is also known as the date rape drug. This explains why there was no apparent struggle throughout the assault.
The assault started in the first room where she was beaten. She probably fell when you found the spot of blood. She was then carried into the next room. The killer ripped off her clothes and beat her again. She definitely was unconscious at this point. He let her bleed on the floor until he had enough blood to write the messages you found using the luminol. The killer then cleaned off the messages. Obviously, he knew we would find them. He then dragged the victim by her hair along the hallway and stopped to hang up his coat. He finally brought her into the bathroom. The cause of death was drowning. He forced her head under the water until death ensued. Like the other victims, she was killed before the mutilations. She was stabbed nine times and then eviscerated from the lower sternum to the lower abdomen. What are you thinking? I'm thinking these mutilations will get worse. It wasn't part of his MO for the first three victims. They were found beaten and drowned, not like this. Do you think he'll change his MO in the near future? No, I don't think so. Drowning his victims seems to be his focus. That stage in the assault is very important to him. No, the stabbing business is from something else. I have a feeling that if we knew what it was, we would catch the son of a bitch. Also, he covered the face of the fourth victim and now this one. This strongly suggests that he knew the last two victims. I'll ask Miller to correlate the last two victims' info. How about you? Did you come up with anything interesting? Yes, I got a partial that doesn't belong to the victim. Very nice. Did you compare it to the partial you found from the fourth crime scene? No, not yet, but I'll let you know if I can compare them. After all, they are only partials. What about the stuff I found? Anything worth mentioning? We know that our killer has black hair, if it was he that hung his coat on the nail. It might have been a junkie for all we know, but it doesn't matter. We can use the hair for DNA comparison and place him at the scene of the crime. I sent the fibers to the FBI labs to see if they can find anything unusual or unique about them. I've been meaning to ask you, did you call her? Call? Oh, no, I didn't. I just don't have the courage. Can we not talk about this now? Sure, but promise me that you will call her. Okay, okay, I promise. Okay, sweetie, I'm out of here. Don't forget my beautifully handwritten report. It's on the table. Hello? Hi, sweetheart. Hey, Dad. I just heard on the news. Another one? Yes, another one. Is everything okay with you? I'm okay. I'm just really tired of this case. It's going nowhere fast. I hate this passiveness. I think it's starting to get the better of me. Well, before that actually happens, why don't you come here and rest? A little R&R &R won't do you any harm. You can use the jacuzzi to relax and put your thoughts in order. And it's almost Christmas. I have a little gift for you. Oh, really? Well, I have the gift you wanted. Are you sure you want it? It seems a little ordinary. Hey, <laughs> it's what I wanted. So, are you coming to the house? Yeah, sure. Okay, honey. I'll see you soon. Dad? Yes, honey? Thanks. You're more than welcome. See you in a bit. Bye. Yes, I... No, well... Yes, I know, but... Here's Claire's report. Hey, Miller, one last thing. Can you correlate the data of the fourth victim and the fifth? 
to see if we're overlooking something? Sure. I'll run them through the database. Thanks for the report. Yes, I... No, well... Yes, I know, but... Dad? I'm in here, sweetheart. Hi, Dad. Hi, Pumpkin. Are you sure about this gift? Yeah, gimme, gimme, gimme. Suit yourself, here you are. Thanks, sweetheart. You know me. I love these things. Now yours. Where did you get this? I thought we lost it. I found it when I was cleaning out the attic. Actually, it was inside your grandfather's chest. You should maybe take a look inside there. It'll take you back. I will. Thanks for the gift, Dad. I had a feeling you'd like it. Remember the stories he used to tell us? How can I forget? My favorite one was Paris, because of the occult twist he brought to it. Yours was the one in London, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, romantic and mysterious. There is one story he always avoided telling me, though. The one when he met Grandma. He never would talk about it. Was it not a fond memory? I'm sure it is, Pumpkin. But he could never talk about it. I think your grandfather lost someone close to him when he met your grandmother. And I guess it was too painful for him to recall. Where'd he meet Grandma? He met her in Prague, I believe. Speaking of your grandmother, this year, can you get around to making her special holiday cookies? Please? I knew that was coming. Aw, oh, they don't take long to make. I know, I'll make some, don't worry. Great, the stuff is already on the counter. What a surprise. I'm gonna have a look in the attic. Might bring back some good memories. Okay, sweetheart, I'll be in here. This might be helpful to get up into the attic. Teddy and I used to be inseparable. Ah, uh, yes, the trap door to the attic. I can't reach it. What was the trick to opening that thing again?
Prague, 1929. Two years had passed since the strange case in Paris. I figured I'd best leave town and come here. Quieter, or so I thought. The case in Paris had stirred my passion for PI work again. I had to let go of my dream of being an artist. It wasn't bringing in as much dough as being a private dick. In all, there were five dead and two unaccounted for. So far, all the victims were prostitutes. I didn't know if I would take the case. To my surprise, this cop Skalnik had no beef about me snooping around his crime scene. <laughs> 